So I'm, I'm, I'm saying step outside of the entire thing that you, your, your view of this, step outside of it. And what is the problem with them doing this? Look from the outside. They're taking away the child's right by circumcising. They're saying that. And they're saying that it, it isn't something that they can ask. It takes of, away the parent's right to make that decision. Well, he just said that. What, yeah. what is the problem with that, though? Think it through. What is the problem with them doing this? It's not equivalent to other laws that say you can't vote until you're so-and-so age. Or you well, that's almost, you're getting close. You're very close. Step outside of our, our presuppositions about this and it being anti-Israel and all of those other things. They are saying, until you are 18, you can't be circumcised, okay? Because you're a minor. Yeah. And you uh, don't have the understanding of what's going on. And so when a parent asks you to do this, you are kind of being forced into it. What is the problem with that if you look at the whole picture? Parents are allowed to do other medical consents. Okay, that's one. That's the first. There's another. And, and what are they arguing for? The exact same people the are... The right of the children. Is that it? Well... To make that choice. So... You're, you're so close. You abort a baby? There you go. Yeah, they, the same people that argue, are arguing that you cannot make a child do something and they don't have the wisdom to make this decision until they're 18 are telling schools and are telling parents they do not have any right to have any say in an abortion, a tattoo, an ear piercing, a face piercing, or anything else except circumcision. That is the issue. That is where the fallacy comes in. Their thinking is totally, totally against right thinking. Completely against. Yeah, but what I'm saying is how are the courts, because this will go to the courts, how are the they're courts just, going to decide? We bad. know, yeah, we know how the Ninth Circuit Court is going oh, to decide. Yeah. They are going to decide on the, the, the people. The people have decided and therefore. But the problem is that every other time that the people of California have they decided an issue, they go against the people. Exactly. The, we know how the Ninth Circuit Court, if this is passed in San Francisco, we know it's going to happen. There's no doubt. How is the Supreme Court? How are they, are they going to say this is a violation of religion or this is a violation of the rights of the children? If it is one, they have got every other possible thing coming against them. The abortion issue. They've got everything coming against them and they're going to have to really choose wisely when they make this decision. Now, fortunately, we have at least four normal brains on the Supreme Court right now. Kennedy. Yeah, Kennedy is a loose cannon. I mean, do you know where that term comes from, loose cannon? You got the cannon and it's on a pin, and if the pin is loose, the thing will fire and it'll go in any direction. <laughs> but that's what Kennedy is. He just fires off in any direction, yeah. whatever. He, However he feels. He, yeah, he just puts his finger up and whatever the way the wind is blowing, and he must love it because he's got all of this power. Yeah. He's the most powerful person in America right now. Yeah. That is all there is to it. He is the most. And if one of these people dies, I, I, God help us. Yeah. Oh, yes. uh, you know, and, well, you know, but. They're all in those lines. They're all Oh, all completely. Over. That's right. But you know what? I, I, I can't say that. Uh, I keep thinking, you know, Clarence Thomas, he's had his heart problems and he's an old guy, and, and uh, black people in general tend to have heart problems. Yeah. Okay, so not making any racial thing there. It's just the way it is. And I keep thinking, oh, Lord, please keep him alive. The fact is that the heart of man is in the Lord's hand. That's right. If he wants him to stay alive, he will stay alive. Okay. If he doesn't, do you see what I'm saying? It really doesn't matter. From our perspective, we say, oh, we've got to have a good Supreme Court justice. The Lord already has all of this totally in his hands. Amen. He could have that, that woman that had uh, cancer, Ginsburg, he could have her out of here tomorrow. And we could have somebody less liberal. But that is his decision. It's but not he, ours. He just put another liberal in there. So. Well, that's right. But it may be somebody less liberal than her. I we don't it. know. We, it, well, really doubt it. Uh, you, never know what you, you don't know. The, the Senate directs these things. It's like, just so you know, when you see these stupid um, emails that come through that say um, gun, the UN is passing, uh, trying to force gun uh, uh, control on us, right? They're, and we, they're trying to get us to sign this gun treaty. 
You get those stupid emails, just yes. hit delete. The reason why is because, does anybody know the treaty ratification process in America? Just because they pass a law, it has to be ratified here. Okay? The president signs it, and then what? In the Congress. What part of Congress? Probably. It goes to the Senate. And what does the Senate have to do? Ratify it. And what does it take to ratify it? Two-thirds. Two-thirds. That's right. It will not happen with the Congress that we have today. So keep that in mind. When, when treaties come up, people get all bent out of shape and they ask you to send them money and all this stuff. Don't do it. Okay? We have a wonderful afternoon or evening, I guess, for you. Take care now. But, yeah, just so you know, these treaty things are, people are trying to manipulate your heart to get their agenda pushed forward. As long as you contact your senator, yeah. that's all you need to do. There's nothing you can do beyond that because it's a two-third vote in the U.S. Senate to pass a treaty. Okay? Unlike other things, our founding fathers really did think that one through. And our, I, I shouldn't say our founding fathers, they thought the whole thing through. But other things have been corrupted since then. That one is still, and that's not going to change because it's very hard to get more than two thirds of any political party in power at the Senate, right? You're usually going to have at least a third and probably a little more of whoever the lesser uh, political party at the time is. So we're pretty safe with that particular issue. We're not going to fall under the UN in this, this nation unless it's forced on us. But things like the Supreme Court justice, I, I, I just think, oh. And then I have to remind myself that Clarence Thomas's heart is beating because the Lord allows it to be. And that Ginsburg lady is here because the Lord has allowed it. And as despicable as she is, 2012, we could have a new president. Oh, wouldn't that be glorious? You know, I, I keep thinking that too. Lord, you know, and that's the kind of thing I pray about. Lord, let these people survive until 2012. Let's get a decent president in there that will make right decisions about his nominees. And then from there, the Democrats can have all of the arguments they want against it. You know, but in the end... Don't get a filibuster-proof Senate. They can stop it. Yeah, I know. Oh, yes. that, well, that's what I was just alluding to, too. The Democrats can stop one or two, but they can't continue to do it. They, they, we did get a good one with Clarence Thomas, even though they tried. Bork, unfortunately, was try? out. But uh, yeah. you know, eventually, you're going to get somebody in there. It may not be as right-wing as you want, but and you know, maybe that's a good thing. You don't want too far to the right. But Clarence Thomas has been outstanding. Scalia has been yes. outstanding. Yes. They, they really are outstanding Judge. I'm talking biblically. I'm not talking about politically here. Exactly. But the two do go hand in hand. They really do. You know, I, I try to keep those politics out to the side, but the morality falls under a political umbrella in this nation. And so you can't disassociate the two. Amen. You know, and I... I know anyway because look at George Herbert Walker Bush. Oh, yeah. I never knew that guy was as liberal as he was. Oh, exactly. Yeah, man. He appointed yeah. Uh, a liberal yes. to the Supreme Court. Yep, yep. And then, of course, you also get his son, which he started was, out on the right track. He never vetoed a single thing except stem cell. I was proud of him about that. But everything else, budgets and budgets, and they kept throwing in trillions of dollars, and he just kept signing it but like look a. Look at the judges uh, he appointed. I know, I know. Well, well, I'm just I'm not a big fan of the Bushes. I, I no, thought he would be a good president. And, than his dad. Oh, I know he did. Uh, give I, Charles Schumer from New York the best ball up there. Yeah. Oh. I, yeah. But I give him credit for one thing. He made this statement about these uh, Democrats who got in trouble with other women. Oh, yeah? And he says the Democrats uh, never professed to be the moral party. The Republicans have. Right. Well, thank you for right. that. Right. Yeah, thank you for that affirmation. Oh. Yeah, he, at least he, yeah, he pegged it right. They have zero morals on that side. And that's not to say all of them, but the, the very fact that they sign the, and I brought this up before, the Democrat Party platform yes. is abortion. So if they say, I am an anti abortion Democrat, they are lying. They cannot hold that stand because they have signed the platform. And I'm going to bring that up, not that particular issue, but the same type of issue on the 10th when I do the Sunday school class, is that when we sign our name to something, we sign our name to the entire document. That's all there is to it. And the, it'll be under a totally different context. I won't bring up Democrats in there because there's probably a bunch. But anyway, um, okay, go ahead. Wherever we were, just keep on going. Uh, let's see. 
23. Yeah. Um, Walter livestock, their property, and all their animals become ours. So let us give our consent to them, and they will settle among us. So there is their reason for wanting to do it. This is the people. Shechem and Hamor said, let's do this thing because they want the sun to be vindicated and not, yeah, but the people are like, typical, it's just, in, it, like I said, I brought this up about other issues with Israel today. Let's do this because we'll benefit from them. And the same thing is happening here. You're seeing it overseas right now. Same thing. Nothing changes. Okay, 24. All the men who went out of the city gate agreed with Hamor and his son Shechem, and every male in the city was circumcised. Three days later, while all of them were still in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords and attacked the unsuspecting city, killing every male. Okay, so three days later, they're still in pain. I don't think, now I, I don't know this because I hadn't gone through that uh, being grown up, but I would think that three days after a... a, a well, any any operation like that, you wouldn't still have the pain after three days nowadays, would you? I mean, they have people that had their hips replaced that walk two hours later. So, But what I'm saying is back then they didn't have all of the treatment. So, yeah, they were in pain. So I'm just looking back in the past. Compared to today, I don't think we would have the same situation. Question, what Simeon and Levi are the ones that killed the entire town. Yeah. What, what is their birth ranking in Israel? They were which sons? Simeon second? No, sec Simeon was second, and Levi? Uh, fourth or fifth? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Higher? Higher? Second? No. Second? No, Simeon was second, so Levi was? First. No, he wasn't first. Third. Third. There you go. They were the second and third sons. I'm bring, yeah, because she said fourth, and I'm trying to just go up a little bit. So just keep that in mind for right now because we're going to talk about something, probably not today. We only got 20 more minutes, but we're going to get to it here real quickly. And um, Simeon is second, Levi is third. Keep that in mind. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. They put Hamor. Hamar and his son Shechem to the sword and took Dinah from Shechem's, Shechem's house and left. Now Dinah was still in the house. That's another clue that I get that probably she wanted to be there. Okay, mm -hmm. She's in the house and she probably said, Dad, I want to stay with this guy. I, I, I may be reading too much into here. It doesn't say that, but that's how I see this. Okay, is I really think the two were in love together. You know, but what he did was wrong. It doesn't negate what he did. What were you saying? He probably really, she was very young and he really romanced her. And she oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. What he did was not Naive. right, but I do see. No, what he did to her, he's not subdued. Pedophile? No. Oh, um, oh. Brainwashing? No. no. He it's said. Uh, charmed? Oh, yeah, it's kind of like charm. What I, mm -hmm. No. You know there's a Finessed. Mm -hmm. no. I, I know what you're saying, though. Yeah, he, he's, he, she drank the Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, whatever, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so I, I, it just gets... Subdued. Subdued, okay, there you go. Seduced. Seduced, seduced. yeah, and he did. And there's no doubt that he seduced her. There's no doubt, you know, but it seems like I won't go any further than that. I, I just, I read that as it being kind of mutual, at least in their hearts. Okay, she's still in the house. They could have said, we want our sister back right now. Let her at, and then we'll decide she stayed there. So, anyway, that's, okay, go ahead. Verse 27. The sons of Jacob came upon the dead bodies and looted the city where, where their sister had been defiled. They seized their flocks and herds and donkeys and everything else that there is in the city and out in the fields. They carried off all their wealth and all their women and children, taking as plunder everything in the house. So they didn't just kill everybody. They took everything. And they took the women and the children, too, brought them into the, into, so now they belong. You know, this is the way it was back then. And Warren, you're going to read this as we get into some of the later chapters, Leviticus or Numbers or whatever, that in war, you went in, and if you wanted this girl, she was yours. 